Hi, and welcome to today's lesson, Comparing Fractions. Let's start by looking at comparison symbols. Remember, we read a comparison symbol from left to right. Here I can see that 9 is bigger than 3, and the comparison symbol is opening up towards the 9. This is a greater than, so 9 is greater than 3. Here I have the exact same value, so this is an equals 2. And here I see the 2 is smaller than the 6. The comparison symbol is facing away from the 2, and I know that this is less than, so 2 is less than 6. Now that we've reviewed our comparison symbols, let's look at a couple of fractions. In these pictures I see on the top, I have two sections shaded out of a total of nine sections, so this represents two ninths. On this fraction, I have two shaded as well, but if I look at the number of sections it's been cut into, it's 10, so this is two tenths. Another way of saying two tenths is just with 0 0.2. So look how two ninths up here is slightly more than two tenths in the picture above. That's because if I were to divide two by nine, I would find that I would get 0 0.2 repeating. So this has 0 0.22 while this has 0, 0.20. So it is bigger. You may be asking yourself, do I need to divide to compare fractions? The short answer is no. We need to compare fractions using common denominators. Here we have a problem of 2 sevenths compared to 3 elevenths. I'm going to start by doing something called cross multiplication. So the bottom left hand corner is going to get multiplied to the upper right hand corner. So 7 times 3 is 21. I'll do the same thing to the other side, 2 times 11, which is 22. What I've really done here is I've said 2 sevenths times 11 on the top and 11 on the bottom. So this is really 22 77ths. That simplifies to 2 sevenths, so I haven't changed the fraction. On this side, 3 elevenths, I really multiplied both the top and the bottom by 7, and I get 21 77ths. Now that we have a common denominator, we can compare. Notice that cross multiplying is always going to be making a common denominator. So typically, we don't rewrite it as the common denominator fractions, we just assume that we're comparing these two numbers because they have the same denominator. So because 22 is bigger than 21, this is going to be greater. And that means that 2 sevenths is also greater than 3 elevenths because these are the same exact fraction sets. Let's try a couple more. Down here, we see that we have 7 times 4, which is 28, and 9 times 3, which is 27. So I can see, when I'm comparing them, that 28 is greater than 27, so 4 ninths is greater than 3 sevenths. So pause the video and see if you can try this one on your own. What you should have found is that 6 times 8 is 48, and 5 times 9 is 45. Because I know that 45 is smaller than 48, 5 sixths is less than 8 ninths. There's another way to compare fractions, and it's using benchmark fractions. When we use a benchmark, we typically use a fraction like 1 half, and we compare the numbers to that fraction rather than trying to compare the numbers to each other. So here's an example, 2 thirds compared to 1 eighth. I know that 2 thirds is more than 1 half, because if I was to divide 3 into a half, I would know that 2 is bigger than that. For 1 eighth, I know that if I was to divide 8 by 2, I would get 4. And since 1 is smaller than 4, 1 eighths must be less than 1 half. So, knowing that 2 thirds is greater than 1 half, and 1 eighths is less than 1 half, I know that 2 thirds is greater than 1 eighths. Pause the video to see if you can try these. You should have found that half of 10 is 5, and since 3 is smaller than 5, 3 tenths is smaller than 1 half. Half of 11 is 5 and a half, and since 7 is bigger than that, 7 elevenths is larger than 1 half. So that means that 3 tenths is smaller than 7 elevenths, because 3 tenths is smaller than a half, and 7 elevenths is larger than 1 half. 
Over here, I had 1 half, exactly, and then I had 1 sixth. Half of 6 is 3, and since 1 is smaller than 3, this one is less than a half. So, 1 half is greater than 1 sixth. Let's recap. When we have common denominators, we cross multiply from the bottom up to compare common denominators. Using common benchmark fractions, if fractions are far apart, comparing each fraction to either 0, 1 half, or a whole can be a faster way to compare. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to click the red subscribe button so you'll always have access to this and other lessons. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time.